Some of you may have seen videos showing how you can trigger a secret level select on Sonic 3D just by wiggling or hitting the cartridge like this. This is something I never intended or programmed, but I'll try and explain why it happens. Much like today, back in the early 90s, if you wanted a game published it had to pass a series of checks that Sega and the other console manufacturers would perform on it. These tests generally took a few weeks, and if you failed for some reason, you had to resubmit and start the whole process again. One of the hardest tests was that the game should never crash, and it would be left running for days at a time to test for this. If it crashed, it was sent back to you with a cryptic error report, and you had to try and recreate the issue and fix it. While I was programming Mickey Mania, I tried to think of any possible bug and wrote error messaging code if anything untoward happened during gameplay. In debug mode, this message would appear and so I'd know what had gone wrong. You can see here in the code the kind of things that I'd trap, like decompression failure or too many sprites on screen at once. When it came time to submit the game, I altered the code so that instead of displaying an error message, it would pretend that you'd found a secret time warp. You'd warp randomly either back a level or forward a level, which would give me the ability to do a fresh reset and clean up any possible errors so the game would just keep running. This really helped with the submission process, as most things that would have crashed the game just brought up the secret time warp, and so Sega wouldn't know it was actually a bug, so the game got released on time. This worked well, so I did the same in Toy Story, this time disguised as a game to win extra hit points. For Sonic 3D, I thought of something that would take it to the next level. The 68000 processor has a built-in system to trap processor errors, part of something called a vector table. You used it for things like setting up the vertical blank interrupt to allow your game to sync to 60 frames a second and so on. It would also cause an interrupt if you tried to do something like divide a number by zero, and those interrupts were usually used so that an error could be passed to the coder for debugging. But, I thought, why not point all these interrupts at the level select code? That way, if I'd miss anything that would normally crash the game, like an invalid maths operation for example, then instead of crashing, the level select would appear and we'd breeze through Sega's submission process. And it worked. And we did. It was only some years later that I began to see video of people claiming to have found a secret level select by wobbling their cartridge. At first I was confused until I realised that by wiggling the cartridge they were breaking the connection between the cartridge and the console, causing the process to throw up who knows what kind of error. And of course I trapped any and all errors and sent them off to the level select code. So that's why if you wobble the Sonic 3D cartridge you'll get a level select screen. I hope that made sense and I'll see you next time.